Hello everyone, Professor T here. In this mini lecture titled Anatomy of a Scientific Paper, I'm going to help you learn how to navigate an APA style scientific paper. The first time that I read primary research of the type that is published in a scientific paper, it took me hours to get through the dense information. These days, several years and a PhD later, I know how to quickly scan an article for the relevant information that I'm looking for. This is the very skill that I hope to impart on you in this mini lecture. We are going to look at a specific article or scientific paper and uh, namely seven relevant parts or anatomical parts that I think are important for you to learn how to navigate. These parts are basic information about the article, the abstract, the introduction, the method section, the results, the discussion, and finally, the references. So what are each of these parts about? Basic information is usually found in the very first page of the article, including the title, the authors, the journal in which it was published, and the year of publication. I have an example here of the very first page of this article that is titled, A Bidirectional Relationship Between Anxiety, Depression, and Gastrointestinal Symptoms in Parkinson's Disease. The authors are listed here, typically in order of contribution, not alphabetically as you would have in a reference section. So in this case, Jacob Jones is the main author of this article. Uh, possibly the person who was responsible for the research design, uh, the idea for the research, or um, and or some other aspects of the research. The other authors may be contributed to, say, for example, data collection or statistical analysis or the write-up of the paper. So specific tasks are distributed across the authors. Uh, we um, also have the affiliations of the authors that are specified here by the letters that correspond to them. So, for example, um, Jacob Jones is in the Department of Psychology Center on Aging at Cal State uh, San Bernardino. Um, and then we also often have any stated conflicts of interest on the uh, first page or sometimes in the back. So for example, if you're having a study evaluating the effectiveness of a specific antidepressant medication, it may be a conflict of interest for your study to have been sponsored by a grant from the pharmaceutical company that manufactures that specific antidepressant. So uh, as a question of ethical uh, responsibility uh, or ethical conduct, researchers have to state any potential conflicts of interest for their research. All right, that's basic information. How about the abstract? The abstract is a brief summary of the entire study. As such, the abstract gives you a brief snapshot of the research question or hypothesis that they are addressing or testing, the methods that they used in the research, the results that they found, and any implications of the results. Uh, we have an abstract here with those very sections labeled. So it's like a mini uh, study compacted into 100 to 200 words. Uh, they Abstracts won't always have these specific subsections labeled, but in this case they are. So we find um, the, the aim of the current study. Uh, it examined the bidirectional association between X and Y. It was conducted in such and such a way with secondary data analysis. The results uh, found were X and Y, and this is uh, the implication or the interpretation of the results. So. Whenever I'm doing a literature review uh, because I am looking to start a study or answer a specific question, I will just quickly scan through various abstracts uh, in a database search to see what the studies were about and if they are what I'm looking for. All right, so that's the abstract, a great resource. What's the introduction section about? Well, the introduction section usually does a literature review um, laying the groundwork for what you are going to subsequently explore in your studies. So it presents various uh, citations of previous studies that have addressed questions related to uh, the study that you are undertaking or the study um, 
in the case of your own research or the study that uh, you are reading about. So, for example, in the study that we are reading about, about Parkinson's disease and gast gastrointestinal dysfunction, we see here in the introduction section uh, that they start by introducing the topic, a GI dysfunction is common in Parkinson's disease. They give some statistics with several references uh, numbered here in blue. So these are things that have been found. GI symptoms have been shown to be predictive of cognitive impairment. Uh, depression and anxiety are also common non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. These are all things that have been found. Um, the introduction usually culminates at the end with the current study's specific hypothesis or prediction, for example. So in this case, they say the current study sought to investigate the longitudinal and, and directional associations between depression, anxiety, and GI symptoms. That's the introduction section. It gives you uh, an idea of what the authors are going to do based on what has been previously done. The next section is the method section. Uh, we have uh, specific subparts to the method section, including the design of the study. Is it a uh, naturalistic observation? Is it a survey? Is it an experiment? What was the procedure used in the study? Um, did we have uh, uh, a, a review of the literature to try and analyze data based on that? Did we uh, recruit participants to do a study um, on uh, using a specific method such as EEG or MRI or uh, simply a behavioral study based on reaction time and accuracy. What was the procedure once participants uh, uh, were uh, studied, be it human subjects or animals, right? Um, who were the participants? Again, human subjects, uh, their gender, specific demographics. Uh, were they rats, mice, cats, or dogs, commonly used in psychology as well? What were the materials? Were there specific mental health questionnaires? Were they uh, uh, specific medications that were given uh, to the subjects or uh, animals? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So in the case of our study that we're looking at, Here's the method section. It talks about uh, the fact that it was a longitudinal, longitudinal, oops, multi-site study of Parkinson's disease patients. Who were the patients? Uh, the participants uh, were followed up for up to five years. Um, there were 487 patients, etc. They talk about the assessment of the relevant variables here, GI tract and motor symptoms, anxiety and depression symptoms. What was used for that? It was a state trait anxiety inventory, so uh, a self-report scale that was given to patients, to, uh, to participants to measure specific variables. So that's the method section with its uh, various subsections. Then we come to the results of the study, right? Uh, this is primary uh, research or even in, in uh, 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 primary research that's not empirical, that's a review of other studies. We come to the results. What did they find? Either by doing direct observations or by reviewing uh, other studies that pertain to their research question or hypothesis. The results section is very distinct from other sections, uh, even just visually. Why? Because it's filled with numbers, often tables and or figures. So it's an objective reporting of what an author found in their study. Uh, as such, it uses numbers and graphs and tables, as we can see here in this table. Um, as well as in this graph of GI symptoms and anxiety. So that's the results section, a report of what has been found in the study using objective language. Then we come to the next to last section of uh, a 
research article, a scientific article, uh, the discussion section. Here, we are going to interpret the results in human language, not just numbers and statistics, um, and talk about any specific conclusions, implications of the study, and limitations. Uh, limitations are an important part of a research article because there's no such thing as a perfect study. Therefore, researchers um, have the responsibility to uh, state right up front what they think the limitations of their own study is and how it could be addressed, they could be addressed in the future. This is an example of the discussion section of this study on Parkinson's disease and GI symptoms. So they start by saying what they found, right, in actual uh, Ling linguistic form. Findings revealed evidence of a bidirectional longitudinal relationship between GI symptoms and mood symptoms, namely anxiety and depression among individuals with Parkinson's disease. This suggests X and Y, and then we also have the limitations of the study. Limitations in the current study include the sample being comprised of newly diagnosed PD patients. While this provides a unique opportunity to study early stages of the disease, findings may not generalize to the entire Parkinson's disease population, right? So an example here of the uh, components of the content of a discussion section. Uh, finally, uh, we have a reference section, which I did not include a slide for, but it's simply listing all of the other uh, research uh, articles that this current article based uh, their findings on. So everything that was cited in the introduction, in the methods, in the results, anywhere in the paper is listed in the reference section uh, in, or in alphabetical order between uh, references and in order of contribution within a reference, right, as we already discussed. So, in sum, the anatomical parts of a scientific paper are the basic information that is provided, the abstract, the introduction, the method, the results, and the discussion and the references. So, now that we are at the end of this mini lecture, uh, the hope is that you guys have uh, reached the objective, which is to be able to dissect an APA-style paper by identifying relevant parts of the paper and their specific type of content. All right, everybody, I will catch you on the next mini-lecture.